Welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, gas turbine engines or jet engines, how they work and what they do. I'll just jump right in um, and I'll be splicing in some videos from my screen to try to explain this concept a little bit better. Um, the first and probably most noticeable thing you'll see on jet engines is the front fan. This is the uh, main fan on the front of the gas turbine engine. Uh, it's a very common sight. It's like the first thing that you notice. You will see that these blades here are actually very well engineered. On some of the biggest gas turbine engines made, they will support a ton of force. You could hang uh, two double-decker buses from each blade and they will be able to take that weight. Uh, they're designed to provide a massive amount of thrust and they sit right here at the beginning or the front of the engine. Now let's talk about what's behind those fan blades. So I'm going to go ahead and represent this fan with some fan blades and we have a housing around the jet engine and once you get past the fan the air goes in two different ways. It can go in either one of these bypasses I'll use a red marker to uh, mark the flow of the air. The air can travel through a bypass or it can go towards the inside or the core of the engine and this will be uh, kind of the place where all the action happens is in the inside. So first of all you have a compressor and it works through a series of blades that are a lot like really really small propellers in a way and all they're meant to do is to spin around and compress the air so the air is squeezed down to a smaller area by the time it hits the end of the compressor. Alright, so here we have a nice uh, cutaway view of a jet engine. Um, here we have the bypass section which is not shown and here we have a compressor. If I can zoom in correctly here. There we go. Um, these are series of compressor blades. They're, they're almost like small propellers in a way. They're not quite, you know, they're engineered and designed differently, but you can see that they're made to compress air as tightly as possible and they just spin around. Um, sometimes you will have stationary blades in between each set of rotating blades and those are called stator blades. The idea is that these blades are spinning and if you get the air spinning too much it won't compress because it's spinning with the blades that are spinning. So the stator blades are stationary and they will help to keep the air moving through the compressor and compress properly. Now another point to mention is different stages. You can see you have one row of blades, another row of blades, another row of blades, another row of blades. These are called compression stages. You have the first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage, and so on and so forth. And on most engines it's run through a centripetal or a centrifugal compressor. Sometimes they call it an axial centrifugal compressor and that looks a little bit like this in the air flows around the outside. Let's pull that up on the computer screen and see if we can get a little bit better picture of what's going on. Here you have the axiocentrifugal compressor. Um, it's pretty cool because the air hits this and it has to go around it and as it goes around it compresses even further. As it is spinning, the spinning force forces the air to, uh, to compress further before it goes into the combustion chamber and the turbine area of the engine. Okay, after this, uh, the air is routed into a combustion chamber. I'll draw little fuel injectors here. So fuel is added and burned, and then it's run through a turbine, or you can call it even a series of high pressure and low pressure turbines. And I'll represent the turbine with blades. So the turbine is the opposite of a compressor. The turbine says, I'm going to take this hot and expanding air and get the energy out of it, to twist a shaft. And the turbine powers both the fan and the compressor. Once it is out, it can do several things. Oh, and before I forget, let's get some uh, views on the turbine as well and see what's going on there. Okay, here we have the uh, turbine area of the engine, if I can zoom in. So what's happening here is the axiocentrifugal compressor pushes the air in here and it loops around and it burns in here 
and it loops around again and it passes through the turbines. Uh, why does it do this? Because you'd say, well, volumetric efficiency and routing it would be much more efficient if it would just kind of not have so many turns in there. Because every time you make a turn, you lose energy. The uh, point of this design is to make it space saving. You can put this engine in uh, smaller spaces and um, have it run well. They do this a lot on helicopter engines. The T55 um, Chinook engine is especially um, particular. It curves around quite a lot like this. You can put them in tanks. So to save space, they have the combustion chamber here and they run it through the turbines. The turbines, um, you can see they have curved blades and the air passes through, spins the turbine, and the turbine powers everything else, the compressor and the fan and everything else. Some turbines will have blades that are faced in opposite directions and spin in opposite directions and that's to help keep consistency among the air so that it doesn't start spinning with the turbine again. Um, you also have high and low pressure turbines. This, the turbine is the most um, vital part of the engine. It is the most heavily engineered. Sometimes these blades are hollow and have air pass through them to cool them. So the turbine is a pretty vital part in all of this. And that is the turbine and a nice view of the uh, engine as a whole. All right, this should be a little bit of a better view. After we pass through the turbine, um, it will do one of several things. One, it will just go straight out the back. And if that be the case, we're dealing with a commercial engine. Commercial engines like the 737, 747, you know, any airliner will have the exhaust go straight out the back after the turbine. And it will have a large bypass. That is uh, one characteristic of commercial engines. They've got a larger bypass. Most jet engines do. Very few don't and this bypass provides 75% of the thrust so all the energy happens in the core and the thrust happens on the fan. Uh, on military engines they'll have a very very small bypass and the thrust is powered by the exhaust. The reason why there's a difference is fuel economy happens with the fan and power and thrust happens when you just push the exhaust right out after the turbine color in my fan. It's a beautiful fan, don't you think? So with the military engine, you'll have a second part. The bypass here will be very small, and it's usually just there to kind of get cool air around the exhaust to cover up any infrared signature as best you can. But after the turbine, you have a series of holes into this chamber that this hot exhaust is passing through. And the idea is to send fuel through, through these holes and it, the exhaust is so hot it will just ignite um, and this is called afterburning or an afterburner so when uh, fighter pilots talk about afterburners that's what's going on you put fuel into the exhaust after the turbine and it explodes and or burns and creates so much more thrust that you can uh, surpass the speed of sound so that is the basics of how a jet engine works and some of the differences between military and civilian jet engines. I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time. If this video was helpful, please subscribe because that is the best way to help me as well. See you next time.